Good morning from Kyoto, Japan. I wanted to find a little bit of a peaceful place to uh, talk to you guys about what the plan is today. So I'm going on my next anime pilgrimage, and this time the anime is Sound Euphonium, which is probably an easily top five favorite anime for me personally. We're gonna walk down the river here and talk. Look how nice. So much more peaceful than being up there with all those cars. There's this little town on the outskirts of Kyoto, kind of between Nara and Kyoto Prefecture, um, but still in Kyoto Prefecture called Uji. And Uji is where most of the events um, of Sound Euphonium and where most of the characters uh, live. It's where stuff happens. We are gonna go there today and we have quite a few places we need to check out. The first one, is uh, a very famous bridge that is seen in the anime a lot. If you've seen the anime, you'll know what I'm talking about. Number two, we're going to actually be climbing a mountain. I don't think it's that big of a mountain or that high of a hike, but we're going to be hiking up a hopefully small mountain um, to a little sitting place where there's like a really nice outlook, really nice view of the city. We're gonna go there. We're going to go to the river there where our main character Kumiko really likes to sit and think. So we're gonna go there too and just generally check out not only those um, real life locations seen in the anime, but just to see what else Uji has to offer and what they are doing with the fact that their town is featured in an anime, if they're really pushing the anime tourism or not. But enough of me talking about it. Let's go look at it. Let's go jump on a train and head toward Uji. <laughs> I just got off the train to Uji Station and check it out. That's how you know you're in the right place. Sound Euphonium. Kyoto Densha Hibike Euphonium. 2021. Cool. <laughs> I'm glad they still have this out, even though the first season came out like six years ago. <laughs> Jeez. So yeah, we have Kumiko and Reina here. Awesome. Let's uh, go check out what Uji has to offer. So Uji is actually known for its matcha, its green tea. Like back in the Heian era of Japan, there was like matcha and teas in Kyoto and stuff, but people went out of their way to come down to Uji to have uh, Uji tea because apparently the flavor was so much better. Actually right now we are just outside of the station, but we have already come across our very first area which is the uh, Uji bridge and you see Kumiko run across this very bridge all the time in the anime or go across it walking across it um, with her friends and stuff it looks like they're doing some construction over there right now I don't know if you can see but they're doing some construction on the railway bridge over there water's moving really fast today it didn't even rain this is the Uji River I want to say actually let's check out and see what this says Ooh, wow. This is one of the oldest bridges in Japan. It is believed to have been constructed for the first time in 646, more than uh, 1300 years ago. It, in its long history, this bridge has been damaged again and again by wars, floods, and earthquakes. However, people have restored this bridge several times, indicating that Uji has been an important uh, point for crossing the river. It looks like it's been in a lot of like pieces of literature. Now anime, of course, too. <laughs> Very cool. I can't believe how old it is. One of the oldest bridges in Japan. And look, it's just still, it still has that old feel. We're gonna cross it, because we gotta go over to that side soon, but wow. I'll definitely be taking a look at some of these matcha places behind me later. I do love my green tea. I do love my matcha. Matcha flavored stuff, I'm a little weird about. I'd rather just like drink the straight up green tea, but today, I mean, you can't come to like the most famous town in Japan for matcha basically and not get some, right? Anyway, the cars are loud, but we're gonna cross this bridge. Actually, fun fact, 
while I was watching the anime, I was like, okay, I know this is in Kyoto, but I don't know where in Kyoto it is. And I saw this Caesarea, like, in some of the shots from the anime. And I was like, I wonder if I look up that Caesarea, like just Caesarea is all over Kyoto, and then find it near a river and find a bridge. I can find what bridge this is. And sure enough, I did. I mean, it's been common knowledge that this is the bridge from San Euphonium, but I felt really cool <laughs> that I was just like, I'm gonna look up this Caesarea and uh, find this anime spot. I think they actually eat here too in the anime quite a bit. This is the most peaceful spot I've found since I've been in Kyoto. You can just tell how old it is and they keep it up really well, but there's still that really old charm to it that I love. There's more bridges over around this corner. Those are cool, I wanna go over there. Actually, I think, we, I think we're heading that way. I think, I think I'm near the bench. You guys might know what I'm talking about, the bench. Let's go to the bench. <laughs> Let's uh, head up see what else there is. You know, I really haven't eaten breakfast yet, so... Oh, they have matcha pancakes. Mmm, maybe this is a matcha pancake day. What a great little side street. And not crowded at all. I mean, it's a Monday morning, but... Not crowded at all. I can't even imagine this place on weekends. So I decided for breakfast to go with a matcha leaf shaped uh, with matcha powder on it. Um, custard, kind of like a custard pancake kind of thing. This is so pretty. This is so cute. Mmm. That is such like a... That's the best matcha powder I've ever in my life. It's like so sweet. So I just got up here from that one uh, road where all of the local matcha shops were and came upon this little park or this little walk area beside of the river. Oh, there's a boat. I want to take a boat ride. I want to take a boat ride. The river looks really clean actually. Not the cleanest waters I've ever seen in Japan but like compared to the river back at Ibaraki where I live. Very clean. Yeah, there's like several benches near the river. Aha, I believe this is the one down here. This is the one. This is Kumiko's bench that she always sits at. Wow. I know that it's just a bench. If you've seen Sound Euphonium, a lot of events happen here. It's in the anime series, it's in the movie. I'm sure they talk about it in the novels, which I unfortunately haven't read yet, but um, really cool. Really cool to just see something in one of your favorite anime and be like, that's it. Wow. I'm just in love. I'm, I'm in love with this place already. No one is here. I mean, I understand that it's a Monday, but if, gosh, if tourism was opened up right now, Monday, you know, Mondays are fine for people who are here for tourism, international tourism, so. I just would imagine this place would be crazy. No one is here. Kind of sad, actually. I hope these uh, little local places are doing okay. I just came into the tourism center that's near the river, right next to the river actually. And they have a bunch of sound euphonium posters inside of the uh, center. There's a letter here from uh, Ayano Takeda herself, who's the creator of um, sound euphonium. And uh, she left a note, I guess it just says like, thank you for watching Sound Euphonium um, and for the support and stuff. This is a place where you can leave notes, I think, if you're a fan. Like a fan book type thing. Oh my god, cute. Look at 
all the art. <laughs> I should write something in here, but I'm pretty bad at Japanese. I will try my best. <laughs> Mine looks so bad. It's more Hibike Euphonium Mudaiski. I will always love Hibike Euphonium. This kanji though. <laughs> it's supposed to be that. How am I supposed to do that? There's a map here of all the locations. I should have just come look at this. I asked the workers at the tourist center that we were just in um, if they had sound euphonium goods. They used to. They used to have like clear file folders and little posters and stuff, but they don't have any now. Um, which, you know, probably makes sense uh, for a lot of reasons. One, the anime is a lot older now, so maybe they just don't have any. And also, I guess that those are produced by Kyoto Animation, which I'm sure you might be aware that there was a fire. Um, someone set the building on fire at Kyoto Animation, and, you know, things have obviously haven't been the same because of that, so be, uh, be really easy on the people, the folks over at Kyoto Animation. They've um, really been through something unspeakable, but um, what we can do is continue to love their, their art, their work. <laughs> walking around for a bit, I found a place that looked so good to eat at. I ended up getting matcha soba noodles along with mochi, some fish, and rice that had like a matcha powder or spice on it. And I'm not gonna lie, this was one of the best meals I've ever had in Japan. Everything was so high quality. Also had matcha ice cream with mochi, jelly, and red bean paste with whipped cream on top. And then I also got just a classic cold matcha. All right, we're crossing over the bridge again. I really wish I had like one of those acrylic stands, like, when, uh, like I had one for Mari when I did the, the Love Life Town and uh, but I didn't think about it before I came here. Maybe there's an animate I think in like Kyoto proper, like Kyoto City. Maybe they'll have some, but I'll be able to bring it next time. I really don't think this will be the last time and I'm in uh, Uji. This is fantastic. I guess I should take some pictures from this side, huh? There's one more specific anime spot we have to go to, and that requires hiking. So, uh, let's hike. All right, we're hiking. We are hiking. Hopefully this is not as <laughs> bad as the uh, hiking that I randomly did for the Love Life Sunshine anime pilgrimage. That was actually pretty tough. Well, so far it's a lot easier. It's pretty, uh, like, even. Even though we're still going up. This is so, so much nicer than having to, uh, climb an actual mountain. <laughs> This is the place, guys. I wanted to make sure that there weren't too many people around, so I waited for a bit, but um, this is the place where Reina and Kumiko have a lot of talks in the anime. And what a view, right? I'll show you a little bit closer. This is uh, quite the view, wow. If I had to guess, 
based on the map. Oh, you probably won't be able to see it on camera very well, but Osaka is like straight ahead. Right here, maybe. You might be able to make out some of the taller buildings, but... A lot of the stuff in the anime uh, takes place at night up here, but they recommend not to climb up here at night because it can be dangerous. But honestly, the climb wasn't too bad. I think I've climbed worse things at night, um, like steeper mountains and stuff, but this is so cool and surreal to be here because this is such an important spot in the anime. And yeah, the hike was not bad at all to get here. And you get just get an amazing view too, which really makes it so worth it, right? Well guys, I think right here is where I'll end the video. Um, in one of the uh, most iconic places from the show. I guess I should start heading down the mountain, but um, if you guys are fans of Sound Euphonium, please let me know down in the comments. Like this video if you liked it. I will let you know what all of the places I went to were. I will link them down in the description. I honestly just did not expect to enjoy this town so much. Um, the green tea being like that famous for green tea here was not something new. It's just I really did not know how all out they would go and honestly it really is delicious. If you want to try matcha or maybe if you're not into it that much you'll probably like it here. It's really good. The sun's really starting to, to go down now so I guess I better get going and go back down the mountain. Thank you guys so much for watching and hopefully I'll see you soon. Bye!